The Lord be with you. And also with you. Will you pray with me? O oh God, you are with us indeed. You are the God with us, who has already come to this world in Jesus, and yet for whom we wait. Not yet are all your promises fulfilled, and so our hopes are raised and our hearts are filled with expectation and yearning in this Advent season, even as we look toward your coming, we remember Jesus and we offer in this time our hearts, our worship of you. Help us, we pray, to set aside all that is not you that we might give ourselves wholeheartedly to your word, your purposes, your good news for this world. We ask it in the name of the one who is to come, even Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, Mountain Shadows Presbyterian Church. Good morning. Good morning. And good morning to those who are worshiping with us via Zoom. I say good morning to Joseph and to Joyce and Ed and to Freya and to Beverly and to Cassie and Henry and Melody and Connie and Karen and Carlton and Helen and Susie and Alida and Madeline and Elaine. Let all God's people in the church say, Welcome. Welcome. And good morning to those of you who will worship with us when this service of worship is posted in its video form at the Mountain Shadows Presbyterian Church YouTube channel. We're glad that you can be with us as well on this, the third Sunday in Advent. Thank you. I will when I'm not speaking from a microphone, put my face mask back on, and I appreciate your wearing yours, and those of you in the Zoom room, well, you don't have to do that. And <laughs> together we make it work. That's our motto today. Together we make it work. And let me say a little more about that. Uh, take a look, well, for one thing, let's take a moment to silence our mobile devices, if you kindly would and take a moment to find a red uh, pew pad that uh, it contains an attendance registry. Won't you send that up and back in your row and note the names with those of those with whom you are worshiping? Now, you'll, you'll see that um, sometimes our expectations and hopes um, are delayed. And 
Today, we hoped and we expected that our guest musician, a uh, longtime friend of this congregation, Linda Updike, formerly Linda Lazzaroni, would be with us. But Linda works as a chaplain and as a musician for a senior community that was COVID exposed recently, and so she could not be with us today for <coughs> safety and health reasons. Likewise, um, our beloved Suzanne Pennington in the choir is suffering with COVID, and that means Randy, who was going to lead music today, also cannot be here. I lift up prayers and ask you to as well for them and their communities and their loved ones. And yet, by God, there will be music, won't there? <laughs> and so, we shall be led in song by Stephen Cupo and our musicians Dan Engeljohn and Joy Busti and Dorothy Grimm and the Mountain Shadows Choir will help us all to make a joyful noise. So sing with gusto this morning, God's people, and thank you, God's people, for pitching in and helping us find the right pitch. Now, I would ask at this time if there are any guests and visitors among us for the first time who are comfortable making their newness known. Is there anybody to whom we might say a special word of hello and welcome and the blessed Advent? Looking around, I feel that I am pretty well acquainted with everybody, but there is someone to whom I have the pleasure of belatedly introducing to this congregation. Judy McGew and Jeff McGew, I invite you to stand. You are among the newest members of Mountain Shadows Church and Judy because uh, you had a time of healing that you needed to go through. We didn't get to say welcome on the Sunday we intended to. Judy, you are a lifelong or a long time Presbyterian and with Jeff, a new member of Mountain Shadows Church. I know you are a textile artisan with a passion for sewing and I am just grateful that you have been mending and that we get to say to you, welcome this morning. Thank you, thank you. And with that, then, I don't think there are others for me to introduce today. I will invite J.J. Johnston to make your way to the pulpit for an announcement for us. Good morning, Mountain Shadows. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see so many faces here and sending very best wishes to everyone in the Zoom room. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, Pastor Rachel asked me to uh, talk about the Christmas Joy offering. And by now, for those of you who are present here, you've seen this bulletin insert. Uh, season of Advent, season of Christmas. Obviously, we're here uh, each year. During this special season, we are we celebrate the wondrous gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Presbyterian Church USA reflects God's gifts to us through the Christmas joy offering in so many ways. This special offering that we will collect next week, December 18th, uh, with envelopes in your bulletin, uh, helps support church leaders who serve God, whether they be retired church leaders, active now or future church leaders our church clergy leaders help point us to god and everything they do think and say so the christmas joy offering has actually been a very cherished presbyterian tradition since the 1930s it helps provide critical financial support to church workers and their families also helps to nurture leaders who are working in racial and ethnic heritage communities. We've been doing this as a Presbyterian for about 140 years. Together, these gifts are making a marvelous difference. Inside the bulletin, you'll see about a million and a half dollars of gifts just in 2021 used to provide critical financial support for these workers that are all over the world. 26 countries represented in the last 25 years. Uh, at the Presbyterian Pan American School. So by, by supporting leadership development for communities of color, particularly, God is calling all of us to support the leaders of our church in the world. For example, through the Ministry of Presbyterian Related Schools and Colleges, 
We help communities of color uh, by offering students the means for a brighter future, helping enhance opportunities to use their talents and skills to serve God throughout the world, the church. To show how the, the, the dollars are just generally spent, also in your bulletin describes about 50% go to past and present leaders. Uh, they are a worker, they're, they're many, many of them are families in need. They're, they may have had a family emergency or a healthcare crisis. They may be the victims of a natural disaster. And just imagine how devastating that would be to any family. The other 50% helps prepare the way for future leaders that I described earlier. Possible for students to learn and grow in the faith Presbyterian related schools and colleges, equipping leaders to go into churches of color. So back to our joy offering. You've seen this bulletin, this is just a primer. We're, we're encouraging you to make your donation at any time. You could go on our, our website, mountainshadows.org, uh, mountainshadowschurch.org, uh, you can wait till next next Sunday, December 18th, and put your offering in an envelope or just at any time it's convenient to you. We think that God blessed Presbyterian churches with incredible leadership over the years. Offerings help support ongoing leadership development and nurturing and help provide comfort to those leaders who have experienced some type of a setback. And I would just say, almost parenthetically, may God bless all servant leaders and their churches that they serve throughout the year. Thank you for your attention and hopefully your generosity. Thank you, JJ, and let us continue in our worship of God. Responsive call to worship in your bulletin. Why do we make our Advent journey? The answer is simple. For the joy of it, John the Baptist asked if Jesus was the Holy One to come. Jesus answered, Look around you. Our calling on this Advent journey is to look around us, to see the Holy One who comes. Today, we light the candles of peace and hope and joy to light our way on the Advent journey.
Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. May God teach us the ways of peace and hope and joy. Amen. Jesus Christ, God came to earth in person. Jesus embodied flesh and blood, spirit and soul like us. He revealed holiness in human flesh. So our faith in Jesus is more than a belief. It is a way of life. Let's pray. Creator of all flesh, you strengthen me hands and support unsteady knees. Spirit of our inner lives, you say to those who are anxious, Be strong, don't fear, incarnate Lord, you open eyes and eyes that echo God our hand. You help us to listen and understand. Look upon us kindly, so that we may look kindly on ourselves and others. Heal our wounds of body, mind, and spirit. In our lands, O oh God, we find reason to rejoice. Holy Amen, on our hearts, we lean quite fear. When we don't know what to say, you inspire us to sing. Help us to perceive your courage as such. Teach us to honor our physical selves. Show us how to care for our health and to protect everybody without prejudice. Let's be 
mercy on our lives and on our creation. Breathe new life into your church, the precious body of Christ. Amen. of water on the highway called the Holy Way. No one will get lost. With the blood of the community of God's redeemed people, we will journey onward, singing to God's glory. say, the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. 
our gospel reading on this third Sunday in the season of Advent comes to us from Matthew's account, and I will be reading from the Common English Bible. Let us listen for God's word. Now, when John heard in prison about the things that Christ was doing, he sent word by his disciples to Jesus, asking, are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus responded, go report to John what you hear and see. Those who were blind are able to see. Those who were crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. Those who were dead are raised. The poor have good news proclaimed to them. Happy are those who don't stumble and fall because of me. When John's disciples had gone, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the wilderness to see? A stalk blowing in the wind? What did you go out to see? A man dressed up in refined clothes? Look, those who wear refined clothes are in royal palaces. What did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. He is the one of whom it is written, Look, I am sending my messenger before you, who will prepare your way before you. I assure you that no one who has ever been born is greater than John the Baptist, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, you're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Neither my husband Ken nor I expected not to be here last Sunday. But for Ken, COVID and strep throat had other plans, and we did not want to share those plans with you, and you didn't want us to, I'm sure. And by the way, we both tested negative this morning, as we have been doing this past week. And we have so much and so many people to be thankful for. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Thank you for all the prayers and the care and the pinch hitting and all that went into keeping the church worshiping and led while we were keeping a safe distance. Amazingly, I never caught COVID. It's a strange virus, isn't it? We just don't know what its twists and turns are going to be, but we are gonna roll with the changes and keep pulling through and keeping the faith. Now, speaking as I was of a sight for sore eyes, in today's gospel reading for the third Sunday in Advent, Jesus has a lot to say, doesn't he, about vision, about seeing, about healing. When John the Baptist's followers want to know if Jesus is the Messiah for whom people have been waiting, Jesus does not answer them directly, does he? Instead, he gives them a litany of good news about health restored. Go, report to John what you hear and see, he says. 
Those who were blind are able to see. Those who were crippled are walking. People with skin diseases are cleansed. Those who were deaf now hear. And as if all that weren't enough, those who were dead are raised up, and the poor have good news proclaimed to them. I appreciate that list of healing even more than I did before my spouse got sick and then recovered. When you see your loved one go from sick to well, you witness a resurrection. The power of antivirals and antibiotics, the power of rest and restoration and prayer, the power, if I do say so, of homemade soups, <laughs> consists of more than medicine and convalescence and nutrition. Healing, healing manifests Christ in the world. Raising a broken, ailing body to new life, disease conquered and health restored, foretell the resurrection in which one day every last one of us will be lifted up. So, when Jesus says to John the Baptist's followers, go report to John what you see and hear, Jesus is urging us to believe our eyes and believe our ears, to look around for signs, because there always are signs that the Messiah is on the loose in this world, working through everyday medicines and ministries that move us from sick to well, from misery to health. Christ works through the everyday only stuff our bodies go through in our quiet, gradual recoveries from ailments. We see salvation happening here and now in our own flesh. Flesh matters. Resurrection is not merely ethereal. It's physical. One of our oldest Christian creeds puts it boldly, I believe in the resurrection of the body. I believe in the resurrection that has already happened and in the resurrection that has not yet happened. Sometimes Christians talk about Advent and our Christian faith in terms of already, not yet. And here's what that means. Already God has shown up in the flesh, in the birth of Jesus. Already Jesus in his life and death and resurrection has accomplished our salvation. But not yet has Christ accomplished all the good that God ultimately intends for all creation. Not yet has God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, there is still more to be done. And just as we can see with our own eyes that God is already here healing us and helping us in everyday ways, we also can plainly see that more is needed. More redemption, more justice, more peace, more mercy. In the past week, I've read a news story and seen a situation that brought home to me the truth that God is not yet through with us, and that it's still crucial for us as people of faith to strive for a better world, for God's kingdom on earth, and to pray all the while, come Lord Jesus. I made several trips to pharmacies last week, 
And one of those was to pick up for Ken a prescription for the antiviral medication that reduces COVID symptom severity. And that same day I read in the newspaper that, and I quote, difficulty getting care for COVID-19 has become increasingly common, a problem for poor, uninsured Americans. The federal government is running low on funds for COVID care, with the nearly 30 million Americans who are uninsured. Because my spouse and I are insured through the good coverage we receive as members of the Presbyterian Church USA Board of Pensions. Thank you. All I had to do was drive up to the pharmacy window and then drive away medicine in hand. But an uninsured person profiled in that news story, a former medical assistant, ironically enough, suffering from her second bout of COVID, could neither afford the doctor's visit nor the antiviral pills she needed. The newspaper quoted her as saying, I felt like I was irrelevant. I felt like I didn't matter. No one, and certainly no one who is ill, should ever be made to feel irrelevant, disregarded, and discarded. That people who need health care go without it in this sophisticated society is a sign that God's kingdom has not yet come on earth. Even though the Messiah was already born long ago, the prayer, come Lord Jesus, is not yet fully answered. A few days after I read that news story about uninsured Americans with COVID struggling to get the same health care <coughs> that people like my husband and I receive, I found myself back at the pharmacy, this time to pick up a month's supply of COVID home tests, also available through our insurance. Behind me in the store in the waiting area, a man wrapped in a blanket sat moaning in pain and kind of stamping his feet. And he appeared to be one of the growing number of people in the Tucson metro area who spent their days at intersections, on median strips, begging for passing change. And one side of this man's face was horribly swollen. Obviously, he needed medical attention beyond what a pharmacist could provide. As I headed home, I saw the man crossing the parking lot on foot, wrapped in his blanket. And I have felt haunted by that image of him ever since. And I've prayed for him, come Lord Jesus. But even so, I've also known that man is Jesus, who says to the privileged and fortunate people of this world, I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Wherever people who are ill or injured are also made to feel irrelevant and don't receive the care they need, there God's redemption of the fallen world has not yet been fully accomplished. We live, you and I, in the transitional Advent land between all the good God has already done in Jesus Christ and the works of compassion and justice God has yet to do through the likes of us. To be a Christian is to play a part in bringing to birth the good news this world is aching for. We are midwives, you and I, 
the purpose of our lives is to lend a hand, lend a heart, lend a voice, do our part to help sick and suffering people know they matter. They matter to God and they matter to us. When we ourselves are the sick and the suffering, then it is our holy birthright to receive the care and mercy that Jesus was born to bring to all of humankind without exception. To John the Baptist's question, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? The answer is yes. Yes, Jesus is the one who has already redeemed us, and yes, the ailing world is looking for another sign that has not yet appeared. And our calling, yours and mine, is to live with such courage and compassion that we each serve as a sign, that the good news of God's saving love is real and true for everyone and for anyone who has not heard or seen it yet. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Folks, will you find the unison prayer of dedication that is printed in your worship bulletin? In one voice, let us pray. Let our whole lives praise you, Lord. We praise you with all that we are and all that we have to offer. We will sing praises to you, our God, for as long as we live. Amen. You may be seated. As we move into a time for sharing our joys and concerns so that together as one community we might lift them up in prayer to God, the giver of every blessing and the healer of every ill, I just got to say thanks be to God for all the helpers and the co-creators of worship from our Minute for Mission presenter J.J. Johnston to our worship co-leader Big Sadari and Sarah Darian to send a lighter of candles. And thanks be to God for our music makers helping us make a joyful noise. Thanks be to God for you all. Let me ask you all, what are the joys and concerns on your hearts? And I ask this as well of the people in the Zoom room. So if you are feeling led to share your prayers aloud, Bring them to mind now, and I'll first turn to those in the worship leadership area. And Dorothy, go ahead. Let's hear from you. Exciting news. This is a joy. I'm Maria Penge, Sifa, Mama Sifa's oldest, passed his citizenship test last month, and Friday this past took his citizenship oath. I have a card here for you all to find from Mountain Shadows, oh. and I will get it to him, or Ginny Will, or we both will, or something. Thanks be to God. Many of us have, have met and cheered on Amori Apenge, now becoming a United States citizen. And thank you, Dorothy, for lifting up that joy for him and inviting us to share it and to add our names. And congratulations. Us and welcome and blessing for him. Yes, Brian. Um, a joy, uh, when I came to prayer practice on Wednesday this week, um, noticed the new flag and the new sign mm -hmm. and how, how clean and bright they look. Oh, that's wonderful. If you're noticing them, then other people are too. So thanks be to God for the ministries of Therese Griffin and the facilities ministry team making mountain shadows visible to those who drive past on Oracle Road. May many of them turn in to come to church and experience the love that's here. Thanks be to God. Yes, Stephen. I'm just going to repeat what you said. I am joyful and grateful to this group of people for allowing me this opportunity and for not judging me too badly. Are you kidding? This, this church is blessed with people who want to give and give. These are people who just do that. Amen. And oh, by the way, our usual director of music, Charmaine Piano Dame, is enjoying some vacation time with family, and may they all stay healthy on their journey and their time away. Thank you, Stevie. I will turn now to the people in the Zoom room, and I'm, since there are quite a few of you, and for all we know, there might be a few prayers, I'm going to take a seat for a moment. And if you are uh, in the Zoom room, Karen, Thomas, in just a moment, we're going to unmute you and, and we'd like to hear from you what your prayer request might be. Uh, can you unmute yourself, Karen? Great. Uh, I, we can, and I'll make sure the rest of the folks do. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to
us to make sure that congregation has heard your prayer request, Karen. We join you in prayer for you as you travel to go see your mom in New York State. And as she makes her transition from a rehab facility where she's been healing after breaking her hip and transitions back to home, we pray that God will, indeed we know that God will provide what's needed. What can be challenging is accepting what God provides sometimes. And for your mom's ability to accept and receive those graces that are there for her, we pray. May she continue to be strengthened. Are there others in the Zoom room? Yes, I see Beverly's hand. And so we're going to uh, hear from you in just a moment. Go ahead, Beverly. Okay. I hope you can hear me. Can. Beverly, I want to just let you know, I put my hand in the right direction. JJ's right here, and we all hear your prayer for healing. We join you in prayer for Betty Barham, our church member, and the healing of her hand, and for your daughter, excuse me, your friend's daughter, Candace, struggling with uh, ovarian cancer. We pray for healing. And if I may add a prayer for your own healing, as we know you've been under the weather, we know God is the great physician and more than more than able to answer these prayers. We join you in them and we lift them up on your behalf. Are there others in the Zoom room who wish to lift up a prayer? Madeline Bosma, go ahead. No, we hear you. Madeline, we join you in your prayer for peace and justice in Ukraine and for the aggression of Russian forces to be stopped and for the sovereignty of the Ukrainian people to be honored and peace to come. And we pray with you for your friend Ted and especially for his financial as well as health concerns, that they be met, that he not have to deal with terrible anxiety on top of what he is already facing in his health, we pray. Are there other joys or concerns to be lifted up in the Zoom room? You know, thanks be to God that we have a Zoom room in which a whole bunch of folks in the congregation can gather. Helen, we hear or see your hand and let's hear your prayer request. Yes. You 
bet. We knew her as Linda Lazzaroni. She is Linda Updike, having um, married, I think, a, a high school friend not too long ago. And she was looking forward to seeing us as I know those of us who remember her were looking forward to seeing her. And you bet we will invite her back and we will convey that to her. She has asked that we hold in prayer the senior community that she serves, which is currently locked down now because of COVID exposure. And we ask for God's protective mercies and healing mercies to come there and anywhere they are needed. I don't see other hands or hear other voices in the Zoom room, so I'm going to resume hearing the joys and concerns of God's people. Thank you, JJ. In the sanctuary, are there prayers to be lifted up on this side of the sanctuary? Yes, Therese. I asked last week about holding me in prayer that I'd be seeing my youngest grandson who is 17. No, I do not have children, but I had the honor of the oldest granddaughter came here a couple of times with me several years ago. But Fernando was a baby being adopted by some of my, two of my friends from Brazil. And he's been a troubled child, a troubled, troubled, um, and um, he finally got locked up and he finally went to a behavior of health and it's a miracle. Uh, I, I had the privilege of taking him out to the day visit and he will be released at the end of this week. But we, we went to see the movie by um, Will Smith of uh, a true story of a, a slave and we went out to dinner and he picked the place we went to a Jamaican place. And there is just an abundance of love, joy, and a beautiful reference of God in his life, which was never there before. Thanks be to God. Resurrection. God is already here, bringing about new life for Fernando and through him. And we rejoice with you in that good news. Are there other joys or concerns to be raised? Yes, Judy. Yes. Uh Thank you for letting us know that our church member, Kathy Sorens, is hospitalized and is having or will have surgery. And we pray God's mercies for her and for her husband, Bob, as he cares for her. Other joys or concerns to lift up, Linda. I'd like prayers for our grandson, Zachary, um, who's traveling back from the UK went to Canada for Christmas. And I get to hug him in nine days. <laughs> oh, good. Who's counting? Uh, for grandson Zach, making a long journey to Canada, where you will go and get to hug him? Yes. May traveling mercies accompany him and all travelers and keep you all safe and well as you have a much anticipated reunion. Oh, and I'll see my, my kids too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, Chuck. Yes, uh, this is for uh, uh, praise. Uh, Joy Lewis, who loves to work and she likes doing church work, may have the best job of all. She get her main workout in Richmond, Virginia is holding the baby. Oh, I know. And uh, baby is uh, four weeks old. So she's really the top of her game there. <laughs> yes, she is. Our elder church member, Joy Lewis, who is doing a ministry of grandmothering right now, getting to hold a four-week-old grandchild, and we rejoice with her and send her our love, Chuck, will you? 
other joys or concerns to lift up. Judy, let's hear from you. I just want to thank everybody who sent cards and prayed for me during my recent illness. Believe me, it was appreciated. Amen, and thanks be to God. Those expressions of care make a difference and they matter, don't they? They remind us that we matter and you matter. God bless you. Yes, Theresa. Yes, and Chuck gets to go to see that baby enjoy okay. just a couple of days here. That's um, wonderful. I want to ask uh, prayers of healing and care for our friends Sam and Marge. Sam fell in Denver and fractured his hip Tuesday, and his recovery is being rougher than we expected. And we know caregivers, it puts a lot of burdens on them, so keep them in prayer. And then Peter and I are going to be traveling most of December and January. We're gonna see Chuck maybe, and yeah, we're headed to Virginia. So traveling mercies, and then Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all, because we won't be back until probably February. Thank you. Uh, Theresa, we join you in prayer for your traveling mercies, Chuck, and your own. And um, I am sorry, I'm having a moment where your other prayer just left my brain. Sam and Marge. Thank you. For your friend Sam and Marge in Colorado, uh, for Sam's healing and for Marge as she cares for him, may all that they need come their way. and lift their burdens. Other joys or concerns to be lifted up in God's house this day? Yes, Jane. prayers for Tess and for her safe journey to come for Christmas and let's be reminded by your prayer that for those of us who are not in the deaf community uh, we may not always understand that there are distinct challenges for hearing impaired people to do things like travel from place to place, and may the way be clear, and may the helpers be made available. Shall we gather up all of these joys and concerns, trusting that God remembers every last one of them and every last one of us? Let us pray. Are you the one who is to come, O oh God? Yes, you are. Yes, we affirm that you are the one who is to come and that you are the one who has come to us in Jesus. And we live in this mystery of praise and thanksgiving for what you have done and anticipation and hope for all that you will do. And we recognize that even as we give thanks and remember your goodness and your graciousness, we still need and ask for more. And you hear every prayer, every prayer, every word of thanksgiving and praise is a response to that good, gracious work already done. And every need and every plea is an expression of trust that you will indeed fulfill your promises. And in the midst of it all, O oh God, we hear our own names called. We hear our calling in Christ to be a part of your wonderful work, your good news. Help us, we pray, to discern what is ours to do, however small or great it may be. Together, we, with you, can 
bear witness to your saving love in a world that still cries for help and healing. We thank you for gifts of healing given, and we ask for them. We thank you for peace wherever it prevails, and we ask that in places of violence and injustice, your people would be given courage and mercy and wisdom to stop harming one another and work for the world that you intend. All of our prayers, O oh God, silent and spoken, the prayers that we ask would go with us and the prayers that stay here among us, we lift up in the name of Jesus our hope. And we say, as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. benediction, I would like to remind you that today when you have refreshments out under the Ramada, you can also stop by the Cafe Gusto table and pick up some just coffee. Also, Christmas Eve is coming, Saturday, December 24th. I hope that those of you who don't fly away to other places will gather to celebrate at a Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. And then, what do you know, Christmas Day is on a Sunday, and we're open for church at 10 o'clock on Christmas morning. And if you come to church, you'll get a present. And so, with that,
Go forth from this place in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one, evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with us all. Together let God's people say, Amen. Amen.